Hello, fight fans. Michael fights with friends. If you like what I do here, please make sure and hit that like button. If you're not subscribed already and you love fighting and MMA, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified whenever I drop a new video or go live like tonight uh, for PFL, one of the final weeks in the Million Dollar Tournament. Let's get into the subject at hand. Uh, so recently, as many of you know, I received a false copyright strike from the UFC, uh, YouTube claims at UFC.com. They claimed that I had used uh, some video from a UFC seven years ago, actually, which was the funny thing about it. And it was a fight companion. It was just of me speaking. As you all know, uh, you guys have heard the story. So I'm going to cut through that and get to what I came on here to talk about. UFC. You have a failed business model. And I want to compare it to something. I'm going to make three key points today, I believe. But first, I'm going to talk about the business model of the UFC. And I love the UFC. I love you guys. I've been watching. I consider myself one of these day oneers. I was watching this uh, on VHS tape uh, as soon as it was available in my area in high school. I watched it on pay per view. Uh, I've been watching this literally since day one. I'm friends with Art Davy, uh, the creator and co-founder of the UFC. I consider him a good friend. Let's talk about someone else's business model, though, and then. Let's talk about what this channel is doing, uh, what MMA holes and other channels that are doing fight companions and talking about MMA are doing. Look at the video game industry. Why is the video game industry so big right now on so many facets? They cut their copyright infringement laws almost completely, almost universal, and almost all of video games. And I don't expect the UFC to do that. And I realize they can't do that. I don't want to infringe upon your, your copyrights. Uh, I understand that. It would be nice to be able to use a 10-second clip here and there to get my point across. Don't get me wrong. But why did the video game companies, a lot of these, decide to do that? It's free advertising. People go online, they play these games, they talk about these games, they help people through these games. Uh, this has created huge stars. Huge stars to the point that video game companies are actually putting out their own tournaments. Uh, Capcom's putting out a tournament here soon. Uh, E-Games is literally one of the biggest events on earth. And what is it? Just people competing and reacting to them playing video games. It's a new world. What are we do? What am I doing? What is, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast, which of course you don't go after him because he's a UFC employee, uh, full-time MMA, Dutch guy that I was on here, Billy Hughes when he's on here. What are we doing when we post these videos, when we go live, we are talking about how much we love fighting in the UFC and MMA. We are giving you a free advertisement. We are telling people to buy the product. I'm telling people to buy ESPN Plus, that it's a great value. I'm telling people to watch the pay-per-views, watch along as you listen to us. Um, you know, as we talk about this and discuss this together, then I'm doing promotions throughout the weeks for your events. I'm doing the picks. I'm promoting fighters. I'm consistently talking about the UFC, consistently keeping it in the news, consistently creating excitement for fights, sometimes as soon as they are announced, like Justin Gaethje, uh, you know, versus uh, Donald Cerrone coming up. Uh, just, we are creating excitement for your product. We are not the enemy. We are, as much as I think that word's overused, the, the ally uh, in this point. Now there's 
The second point uh, that I want to get to in this is, WME, you were thinking about going public. You guys have actually announced intent to go public. This is an entire different situation when you decide to go public with public stock because you are literally, not only are you a servant to the public, uh, you are not exempt from any whim in the media and in the public and the very smallest, smallest thing blown out of proportion can be a complete nothing. Like when Elon Musk uh, smoked marijuana on the Joe Rogan experience and it can send your stock into a nosedive. When you're attacking your own fans, uh, people like me that are advertising for you, people like viewers of this show, of Full Time MMA, of, you know, of other fight companions and MMA channels, uh, you're attacking us all. Then you see those numbers go down. You see the bad publicity come out in Twitter and Facebook and everything. And what do you think is going to happen to that stock? You don't control that narrative anymore. You can't just gloss it over like you did when you moved everyone from Las Vegas to California uh, without so much as an apology when John Jones could not get licensed to fight in Nevada. Uh, it's, it's a whole different ball game. Uh, then I'm going to get to the third point before I wrap this up. Of this, if, Look at what the UFC came from. I know you're a new company. I know UFC is owned by WME. But look at when the Zufa brothers, when they bought the UFC from SCG for $2 million. You know the story. Most MMA fans know the story. Bought it for $2 million. Uh, the company was, you know, com- almost completely bankrupt in a tremendous amount of debt, banned in 49 states. I mean, there wasn't much of a company to talk about. And think about everything that all of those people did to make sure that this sport would be legalized. Uh, John McCarthy, uh, you know, one of the fathers of the MMA, you know, of the UFC and of MMA, He sat there with legislators and helped write common sense rules and laws to help get this passed. It was hours and hours and millions and millions of dollars spent in litigation and on talking uh, with politics, on listening to, you know, John McCain, a future presidential candidate, call the UFC human cockfighting. Man, have you? you came a long ways as the sport came a long ways and everyone in the community should be proud of that. Uh, Everyone in this community, we fought against, you know, tremendous odds. So many people were against this, Uh, you know, so many, you're going to put fighters inside of a cage. We're attacked from every angle. The Washington street journal attacked us. NBC attacked us. ESPN, the now partner, don't forget, they attacked the UFC for many, many years until they decided it could make them money. Budweiser attacked them before they became a sponsor. Budweiser tried to get them banned. John McCain's wife was on a board, uh, you know, with Budweiser trying to promote boxing because it helped sells a Budweiser and it bash the UFC. And last but not least, just recently in the last few years, just finally got licensed in the state of New York. This is a very fragile sport. Do not forget how new this is. This is still the new kid on the block, still very fragile. You still have people out here talking about creating unions, other people wanting uh, to take you down competitively. Some of you, them may be wanting to work with you, but 
very fragile sport. It could all be over as fast as a Jorge Masvidal knee to the face of Ben Askren. I, this, this is not a game. And when you attack your own fans, when companies have done this in the past... Uh, it does not bode well for them. And uh, don't think that other companies won't get behind this. Do you remember in the 90s or early 2000s when music companies went after college kids for illegally downloading songs and albums? They went after their own fans. Uh, for downloading songs and albums, and Pepsi brought them all out and put them on a commercial. Uh, they put them up on a pedestal. Don't think that that can't happen to you. Uh, so please respect your independent creators. Embrace us like we embrace you. We got nothing but love for you. We'd like to see some in return. And for that, you're welcome. As always, guys, I respect you. I love you. I respect you. And I'll see your fine asses tonight.